OK, so before we look at the, the wall on how to plan your project, please do sorry, like the video if you found it useful, subscribe to the channel because I'm trying to grow it. And as I said, the most thing I like you to do is share the video. If you found it useful, please share it with your friends to let them know how useful it is and, and that, you know, it's something that they might like to do. So before further ado, let's crack on. It's time for the wall. What is the wall, you might ask? Hey, look at me. I'm doing reaction videos. So this system that I'm going to introduce to you is not my system. So it's by this YouTuber called uh, Struflus. Um, sorry, I don't know his uh, real name. But he's got some great um, ways of how to just, uh, as it says there, productivity hacks, um, some great ways to develop your creativity, as well as some um, good insights on design and stuff like that. So from a digital marketing point of view, especially from a student point of view as well, this guy is well worth watching. So let me show you his take on the wall. Well, he's not his take. He developed this. Okay. So as an academic, I have to cite the, you know, the genius that created it. So I'm going to cite this guy, uh, let you watch him for a minute, uh, a few seconds to see what he does. And then I'll show you my take on it. I'll show you. This is the crux of my productivity system and it's so analog, but I love it. Here's the wall that I've lived the last year of my life by. What I do when I take on a big singular project is I split it up into what I think the smaller constituent elements are going to be. So you can see here I've got my book. It started with an outline, then a signed agreement, then the draft of a chapter, half draft, shitty draft, good draft, all the way to half drawn, full drawn, final touches, and then off to the publishers eventually. And then I like to gamify it with these arrows. I move these arrows along and it's kind of like a loading bar and it just feels fun. I don't have to keep the process in my head because it's on the wall. It sounds so simple, but it helps so much. Now so there we can see a very simplistic, and as he says, it sounds simple, but it is very, very useful to then get it out of your head, get it down on a piece of paper so you can see how it works. So let's see how I've done that. So here we can see a very quick overview of my wall. Um, it's a little bit small here, and as I'm not very used to talking to a camera whilst doing that, so I'm going to switch to a better view to help explain it to you guys. Okay, so here we can see my version of the wall. Um, you can see I've taken some elements um, from Struflus, but I've also added in my own little <coughs> my own little touches in there as well. And so I've tried to keep it all visual. I've got three key um, things that I'm working on at the moment. The top one is a module DMSM, so that's a module my students have, have worked on. Uh, the next one, actually, the lecturing styles is a book that I'm currently writing. And uh, you can see that there. And then the final one is the project, you know, because this is about how to write the how to plan your project. So you can see how it kind of fits in with other elements. You can have some of your previous modules there and then you can do it. Now, actually, this is quite small, as you saw in the video. So um, it, it's not that great to write on. So I do need to do it and, and size it up there um, because it is a bit too small. But you can see there there's key little elements like I've got notes on there. I like to visualize everything I'm doing. So that's, that's why the same picture on the front one actually then re, re, um, is throughout there. Because once again, one of the key things in academia, I, I loved how um, Struflus broke it all down into key elements, which once again, this needs more work doing on breaking it down into the key elements. But one of the key things that you need to remember within academia is you've got to keep the main thing. Or what's the phrase? The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. So within my dissertation, and if you've already watched the video earlier about how to choose a dissertation topic, I chose three key areas. So those three key areas have to be relevant throughout my entire dissertation. And if I talk about anything that's not one of those three key areas, I need to nix it off of my dissertation. Same with my book. My book, as you can see there, has uh, three overarching themes and six, six key areas. So once again, if I start waffling on about anything that's not those six key areas, I need to call it a day. Same with the DMSM one there. I've kind of got this, um, the learning outcomes there. I don't know if you can see it too well, but my students are all too familiar with that infograph there. And same again, if it ain't part of the learning outcomes, don't have it in your assignment, it gets you no marks. So it just helps me keep me focused. Even when I'm writing the different chapters, it helps me keep me focused. You can see there, I've, I'm a lot more egotistical uh, than Struflus. So I've got little images of me there, of oh, me pre-facial uh, hair, to show my, my task progress on there. And once again, another little thing that I like to do is I like to add in the rewards and you can see there there's different color rewards. Uh, the reason is the, the blue rewards with one exclamation mark are actually um, low, low cost, low time, orange just slightly higher cost, higher time and then green are more expensive and more time. Um, and you can see there that I break. I don't have a, a reward in the middle. It's just it's the reward comes after a, a certain 
section it just so happens they all lined up in the middle there but once again within my module if you notice there i had a, a simple reward half uh, half half for doing two hard bits which were the from some in the situation else and then a slightly bigger reward once i handed it all in same with my book there i've got a bigger reward once i've done this questionnaire bit and then a massive reward once i've finished writing it and then as we saw with struthless there you know the, the there's going to be extra stuff about sending it off to publishers uh, all that kind of stuff so just because i've done that but I'm, I'm trying to keep this focused on how to write assignments for you and then same with the dissertation after i've done my late review i give myself a big reward or a medium-sized reward after i've done the methodology just a little reward and then when i hand it in a couple of days of partying okay so you can see there some elements there that i have and then also as you can see what you might be able to see if you zoom in is on the top left and bottom right hand corners i'm trying to bring in a little bit of holistic elements because one of the key elements that students don't do is they don't have this synergy in their writing and they don't foreshadow effectively within their sections so yes i'm doing my methodology so i'm, I'm currently looking at my dissertation right now uh, yes i'm doing the methodology but i need to know what came before so the lit review so some elements from my methodology will come from my lit review and i need to know what's coming next the findings so it's still within that chapter to be aware of what comes before and what comes after uh, i'm going to give you a detailed breakdown of more of a how to plan your dissertation within a i don't know maybe i'll just use a 16 week timetable and how it's not straight as simple as this but you can see how it works but that foreshadowing i think is a big point so let me just do show you a little bit on what i mean by foreshadowing okay so we're going to look at foreshadowing and we're going to use a, a quick um scene from one of my favorite films the avengers Doing, Mr. Stark? Uh, kind of been wondering the same thing about you. You're supposed to be locating the Tesseract. We are. The model's locked and we're sweeping for the signature now. When we hit a hit, we'll have the location within half a mile. Yeah, then you get your cue back. No muss. No fuss. What is phase two? So there we go. Fa what is phase two? So if you're not familiar, this is the phase one of the MCU universe. And Tony asked the loaded question, what is phase two? So Let's see how this, this scene pans out. Phase two is S.H.I.E.L.D. uses the cube to make weapons. Sorry, the computer was moving a little slow for me. Rogers, we gathered everything related to the Tesseract. This does not mean I'm that we're I'm sorry, making... Nick. What were you lying? I was wrong, Director. The world hasn't changed a bit. Did you know about this? You want to think about removing yourself from this environment, Doctor? <laughs> I was in Calcutta. I was pretty well removed. Loki is manipulating you. And you've been doing what exactly? You didn't come here because I bat my eyelashes at you. Yes, and I'm not leaving. So there we go. That's one of the side stories. Sorry if I'm giving away spoilers here, but that's one of the side stories of the entire phase two, their romance, and how she, she does, in effect, manipulate him because, you know, it's getting very dark, time to sleep, etc. Because suddenly you get a little twitchy. I like to know why S.H.I.E.L.D. is using the Tesseract to build weapons of mass destruction. Because of him. Me. Last year, Earth had a visitor from another planet who had a grudge match that leveled a small town. We learned that not only are we not alone, but we are hopelessly, hilariously outgunned. My people want nothing but peace with your planet. But you're not the only people out there, are you? And you're not the only threat. The world's filling up with people who can't be matched. They can't be controlled. Like you control the cube? Your work with the Tesseract is what drew Loki to it and his allies. It is a signal to all the realms that the Earth is ready for a higher form of war. A higher form? You forced our hand. We had to come up with a nuclear some... deterrent. So once again, if you get that there, Thor talking about the higher form of war, he's, uh, Nick Fury says the world's there. So that's a hint to uh, Thor Dark World. Uh, which is coming up in uh, a few months <laughs> on the release dates of this. So we've got the phase two. We've got a nice overarching one about um, Hulk and um, Black Widow's romance. We've got a nice little nod there to Thor Dark World. Because that always calms everything right down. Remind me again how you made your fortune, Stark. I'm sure if you still made weapons, Stark would be neck deep. Wait, wait, hold on. How is this now about me? I'm sorry, isn't everything? I thought humans were more evolved than this. Excuse me, do we come to your planet and blow stuff you up? Understand you understand treat your champions with such mistrust. You're not my champion. Boy's really what that naive. Shield monitors I'm potential curious. threats. I'm Captain America is on threat watch. Captain America on a threat watch there. Uh, if you're familiar with um, Winter Soldier, 
that's where they talk, start talking about the, the Hydra, the, the fret watches and things like that. It then um, later comes into um, other ones such as, <clears throat> well, we'll talk about it in a sec. You're on that list? Let me you you above or below Starts of the guy. You made a one ball 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 I feel threatened. It's just respect. You speak of control, yet you court chaos. This is MO, isn't it? I mean, what are we, a team? No, no, no. We're a chemical mixture that makes chaos. We're, we're a time bomb. You need to step away. Why shouldn't the guy let off a little steam? You know damn well why. Back off. Oh, I'm starting to want you to make me. Yeah. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off. What are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Okay, that's kind of funny. I know guys with none of that worth 10 of you. I've seen the footage. The only thing you really fight for is yourself. The only thing he fights for is himself. You're not the guy to make the sacrifice play. The sacrifice play, if you know phase three ends, that's an interesting one. If we know how this film ends, it's an interesting one. To lay down on a wire and let the other guy crawl over you? I think I would just cut the wire. Always a way out. You know, you may not be a threat, but you better stop pretending to be a hero. A hero? Like you? You're a laboratory experiment, Rogers. Everything special about you came out of a bottle. Put on the suit. Let's go a few rounds. <laughs> Put on the suit. Let's go a few rounds. Hinting at the Civil War uh, towards the end of the MCU. So there's probably there's probably some in there that more people that understand the MCU and um, some of the other sub stories, etc., can probably hint at in there. But that that little scene, that three minutes there, had. You know, a nod to about four of the f phase two films that are coming up soon within this series, as well as the the underarching love story of um, Natasha Romanoff battering, battering her eyelashes at Bruce, ex and the very obvious what is phase two at the beginning. So when you're looking at foreshadowing within your work, look at how these guys did it. There we go. So hopefully you enjoyed my video there and um, you know please do as i say i'm trying to go to the channel so please do like it. i mean come on look i did every i did reaction videos i did a, a live video feed from my camera uh try to meme some avengers stuff in there so you know uh if you liked it please do like it if you find it useful think about subscribing to the channel so that i can get my uh, grow my channel and as i've said please do if you did find it useful my my, my main metric that i try and judge on is how many shares it's got so if you did like it and you did find this useful really please do um share the video and thank you so much for watching till the end